Our first hearing, bill hearing for today will be House File 3393 from Representative Sandell. It's our intention to lay this bill over for further consideration and possible inclusion in a future omnibus bill by no later than 1130. Rep. Joachim, would you like to make a motion to move House File 3393 to be before the committee to lay it over for further consideration and possible inclusion in a future omnibus bill? Yes, I make that motion to move um, the House File before the committee. Thank you, Representative Joachim. Uh, with that, welcome to the committee, Representative Sandell. Please introduce your bill. Representative Sandell, you're muted. Uh, um, um, Chair Dabney and members and uh, staff, thanks very much for uh, your attention this morning and the invitation to uh, talk about House File 3393. The topic of uh, Economic education is familiar to this committee and the Minnesota Council for Economic Education is a familiar partner in our effort to strengthen one of the fundamentally important issues as we try to strengthen students' preparations for citizenship. No one questions the need for students to understand economics and personal finance. The problem is, however, that Minnesota teachers are often inadequately prepared to effectively instruct their students in these topics. Less than 2% of secondary school teachers are focused uh, in their undergraduate preparation for teaching. Our elementary teachers who must now help their students meet state standards in economic and personal finance typically have even less preparation. Legislative grants in the past have supported MCEE. I taught school for many years, often teaching courses in economics, and though I had a background in the subject, I found the help of both the National Council and the Minnesota Council for Economic Education, great partners helping strengthen my work and benefit my students. One of my former students went on to work for the National Council. House file 3393 would continue to provide those resources. The bill requests an appropriation of $150,000 in fiscal year 2023, and an annual appropriation in the base of $300,000 beginning in 2024. It's the minimum level needed to enable MCE to del continue delivering an exemplary professional development program offering workshops and courses from introductions to the topic to full courses for graduates. The workshops are offered in person in the Twin Cities around the state through affiliated centers for economic education at colleges and universities. And during the last two years, the entire portfolio of training moved online. MCSS is a terrific operation. It's uniquely qualified to provide the service. There's no other organization routinely offering this kind of professional development for Minnesota teachers. The executive director, former representative, Dr. Julie Bunn, has been a terrific, has been terrific providing academic and intellectual leadership, as well as the determined and demanding administration necessary to expand its reach. Mr. Chair, you know I'm going to uh, go on and talk about this for a uh, moment, but I'd rather you hear from Julie and the MCE trained teachers who are with us today. Thanks very much for this opportunity, <clears throat> and I'd like to encourage you to call on uh, our former Representative Bunn to uh, talk a little bit more about this subject. Thank you. Well, Re Representative Sandell, thank you for that, and we do sit next to each other on the House floor. So, uh, Representative Bunn, former Representative Bunn, Dr. Bunn, uh, good to see you again. Welcome back to the committee. Uh, please introduce yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good to see you, Chair Dabney and members. My name is Julie Bunn. I'm the Executive Director of Minnesota Council on Economic Education. Uh, took this position beginning in 2018. In a moment, you're going to hear uh, once again in some cases um, from the heart and soul of our organization. Those are the teachers we serve and support to advance our mission. Now, however, I want to start with our heads and a few numbers to make the three points in support of our request. First, as you, many of you know, this is the fourth year MC has introduced a bill requesting base funding for a core teacher professional development program. Our initial request in 2019 was $500,000. This represented half the budget for MC to deliver a robust teacher professional pro development program statewide. We received at that, last, that time less than one fourth of our request as a one-time appropriation. Last year, spreading across two bills and two finance divisions, we've requested $400,000. We received one-time non-renewal grants of $150,000 for two years via the Commerce Line and none through K-12, even though your, your, the House and your committee were very helpful in advancing it in the House. The request in this bill is for the minimally as as um, Representative um, Sandell said, the minimally sufficient 
amount we need for ongoing support at the base level. The accomplished teachers you are about to hear from received their training from MCE when we were receiving double the financial support for professional development we currently receive, approximately a million dollars a year. They were able to experience in-person, intensive, multi-day trainings at little or no cost to them. Without ongoing state funding, such offerings will not be possible going forward. Historic federal higher education private support for these activities for the most part are now gone. My second point, during the pandemic, MC has been extraordinarily successful in delivering training to teachers and competition staff capstone experience to Minnesota students statewide. In fiscal year 2020, MC doubled the number of teacher workshop registrations compared to each of the previous two years. Then in fiscal year 2021, we more than doubled those registrations again. Over 2,500 teachers registered for our online workshops last year. In each training year, these teachers instructed over 40,000 Minnesota students. And of course, many more they will instruct over the course of their careers. Over these same two years, MC directly served approximately 1,500 students a year through their capstone and competition programming. My final point today, MC has ambitious plans for the future that are necessary to improve the financial and economic literacy of Minnesotans. First, working collaboratively with others to ensure all Minnesota students receive sufficient personal finance literacy education. Second, revising and creating curriculum and lessons to include and reflect all of Minnesota's diverse student population. And finally, providing training and curricular resources aligned with the new state standard, social studies standards when they are approved. But we cannot do this effectively without going ongoing stable state support. A January 2022 survey of state councils showed that with few exceptions, the active and effective state councils received 25 to 50 percent of their funding from their states. Our small, our small organization can certainly continue to report each year to MDE and to the legislature on our activities, accomplishments, and provide extensive metrics. But we do not have sufficient staff or resource to return annually to ask for funds. We look to you to continue this conversation this, this session, and we ask for your sort support. Thank you. We turn now to Joel Coleman. Thank you, Dr. Bunn. Yes, next on the list, Joel Coleman, a social studies teacher at uh, Uba Medical Academy, uh, Hopkins, Minnesota located charter school. Mr. Coleman, please introduce yourself to the for the record and proceed, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, Chair Dabney and members of the committee, my name is Joel Coleman. Uh, as he said, I'm a social studies teacher at Uba Medical Academy, uh, charter school located in Hopkins. Uh, and I've been here for 11 years and love every year of it. Uh, I'm excited to talk with you today about the impact of MCE has had on my students uh, and my own teaching. Uh, you know, when I first started teaching in 2010, my main goal as a teacher was to help get first generation college students uh, into, uh, into college and be successful in college. And one issue that I saw when I first started teaching was that uh, giving them co-enrollment courses, like courses offered through the University of Minnesota College and the Schools, was a fantastic way to get them that access to a college degree. Uh, thankfully, MCE stepped in uh, and provided me with uh, many, many trainings that allowed me to uh, qualify to teach for college and the schools microeconomics, which I've been teaching now for about six years. Uh, I took 10 month or sorry, 10 week long courses, several of them during the summers with MCEE, many trainings, uh, and really uh, the only way that you could uh, qualify is to get a master's in economics. Uh, and that's not really something that can, can be feasibly done uh, by a social studies teacher. Um, so in reaching my first uh, generation students, uh, you know, I've been teaching CS microeconomics for many years now, uh, and I've seen the impact that it's made on their uh, future ability to graduate from college on time successfully with, with minimal loans. Uh, not only has it helped uh, engage my students um, and get them that college degree that they deserve, but also it's really uh, engaged my students uh, and made myself a better teacher. Uh, to test their growth even, uh, the MCEE runs the Economics Challenge, kind of like a quiz bowl competition uh, that my students love participating in. Uh, and it tests basically everything they've learned from my class uh, against students from around the entire state. 
Uh, and in doing so, we've competed for about five years now. And uh, just at last year, we won state and went on to nationals and were able to represent uh, the great state of Minnesota and finish about middle of the pack. And we're very proud of that. Uh, what I think I'm even more proud about uh, for that competition is that those students aren't just 4.0 students on that quiz bowl team. Uh, these are students who are uh, maybe not have seen themselves as um, you know, ready for college. Uh, I know even my first team that I, I took to the challenge, um, I don't think the average was more than a 2.0 GPA, yet at the end of the challenge, they started seeing themselves as students who could go against other students and knowledge bowl and could do well. Uh, three of them have graduated a four-year college since then. Uh, so I've really seen that, that nice impact that uh, the council has had uh, on those students uh, and again on my career. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Next on the list is Brandy Siddiqui, K-12 Social Studies and Ethnic Studies District Program Facilitator and a former social studies teacher with the Minneapolis Public Schools. Uh, Ms. Siddiqui, first let me know, did I get your last name correct? Brandy, you I'm did. pretty clear on. Siddiqui, nice job, bravo. It's, it's a good day. Thank it's you very much. Please, uh, welcome to the committee. Please present your testimony. Well, thank you um, to the committee for having us present here and uh, Chair Davney and the members. We appreciate your time. Um, so I was a former social studies teacher the last nine years. And then this year I work for the District of Minneapolis Public Schools. So I'm the district and I am a district program facilitator for social studies and ethnic studies. Um, because, partly because of my work with um, MCEE, but also just knowing how high school teachers feel. Um, I've spent a lot of time trying to help some of our teachers like learn how to gamify economics, which is something I took away from my time seven years ago when I trained with MCEE. By the time I had taken my first week long course with MCEE, I had already been teaching econ for about three or four years. And it was all right, being honest, but like most social studies teachers, it wasn't really my thing. And I was kind of confused about some topics So we did the best we could. When I went through MCEE, they really taught us how to gamify it, how to add simulations to it. And that really helped change the way I taught econ and made it much more fun. Um, and so this year as the district person, I went around and gave to 25 econ teachers different simulation kits that largely came out of my time with MCEE and the simulations that we did. And just teachers like almost crying literally because of the pressure of the pandemic, but also just this need that was being met that like, I don't know how to teach econ, how do I make it more fun? Um, and it was funny because I was telling someone how this one game is kind of difficult for kids to really understand it, but we keep explaining and keep explaining it. Then I said, but they have a lot of fun when they play. And it was funny because a teacher just said to me, well, that's part of that social emotional learning that we just need in our classes. And I was like, you're right. And I hadn't thought of it that way. And that really stuck with me. But like some of the things that like MCE teaches teachers to do aren't necessarily always content based, but are also, I mean, are content based, but also add an emotional element. And so the focus isn't always just, do you understand this perfectly well, but like, are you having fun is, and does economics become a fun topic for you to um, be interested in and a fun class for you to be a part of? And I think that's really important for students in social studies to feel that way, to feel seen. And how do we hum uh, add humanity element to economics? How do we make it about people and not just dollars and cents? And if we look at like the pandemic and what's happened with that, and we talk about price gouging and we can kind of see how it plays out in reality. And I think that's really important for students. So um, MCE has done a phenomenal job in like helping change my teaching profession and then also helping me extend this further to other teachers and trying to get them also to be a part of other um, educational opportunities offered by MCE. So I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Siddiqui. Last testifier, uh, since it's apparently Social Studies Teachers Day here, uh, the Education Finance Committee, uh, is Race Hardy, a social studies teacher with the, at Austin High School in the Austin Public Schools. Mr. Hardy, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. After you unmute yourself. Thank you, Chair Dabney and committee members. Um, uh, my name is Race Hardy, Austin, Minnesota. I really appreciate this opportunity. I come to you today, um, I'm a taxpayer, I'm a Minnesota taxpayer, and I care about how um, my money is spent and how my fellow taxpayers' money is spent. I'm a dad. Both my daughters went through Minnesota schools. 
I am a high school social studies teacher who teaches economics, and I'm a community college instructor who teaches economics. And I tell you those things because um, I care about economics. And there is no, uh, I wanna make this point really clear that there, there is no other organization, not just in this state, but in this country that is more focused on helping people teach economics than the National Council and the Minnesota Council. And of those councils throughout the other states, there is no council more geared toward, towards its teachers in its state than the Minnesota Council. I have 30 years of experience with the council. Um, my first was, I was about an inch and a half above drowning while I was student teaching. And I got directed to the Minnesota Council office at Mankato, what was then Mankato State, and it saved me. Um, I, was te I was student teaching in history, and I was told that I had to bring economics to the history lesson. And I had no idea what to do. The Minnesota Council showed me what to do. And it's been since that time, so that was, it was, in fact, it was 32 years ago um, this month that I started that student teaching that class at Oatana High School. And it's the Minnesota Council that was what saved me. And what they do, um, if you're not aware of it, is what the Minnesota Council does is it aligns every one of its assignments with what the state of Minnesota requires in its standards. And then it provides opportunities for not just content, but as Brandy said, it's also the means and the ways of instructing or delivering that content to students. But then it also wraps things up. It provides assessment tools for teachers. So you get the curriculum, you get the instructional method, and you get the assessment, and it all aligns with what the state of Minnesota requires. And, but it's also flexible enough for each individual district as districts have their own ability to um, like what grade has those standards and things like that. And it, I, I, I presented a student's um, statement, Siri and Sorge. I really, really hope that every one of the committee members takes the time to read. It's just a couple of paragraphs that Siri wrote. She graduated last year from Austin High School and she, tremendous human being. So it was easy to ask her and she responded immediately. But if you just read her words about the work that the council has done through her indirectly, um, she's also a uh, Rockonomics uh, award winner. And if you don't know about Rockonomics, just check out the MCEE website. It's one of the competitions students get to do and Siri and her friends won that. And you talk about having fun. All you gotta do is watch that YouTube video if you wanna see a student doing intellectual work and having fun while doing it. So the name of the video is Unemployment Funk. It's Siri and Sarge. And people, the MCEE is the one place where a teacher can get help with every aspect of teaching economics, but not just economics, mathematics, using economic principles, reading, using economic principles, writing, using economic principles. It doesn't matter what you're going to teach. You can find an economic concept in there and the MCEE is the place where this is presented for teachers and teachers are given the opportunity to get better at using them. So I really thank you for the opportunity. And I hope I didn't exceed my time here, but sure would take any questions if anybody has any. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Uh, members, when this hearing was posted, the public was provided with instructions on how to sign up to testify during the public portion of this bill hearing. We received no requests from the public to testify. So. Member questions. Representative Bennett, you've been uh, patient. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I'm not sure who to direct this question to, so I'll just throw it out there and let somebody uh, take it on. So I'm I'm curious the the nuts and bolts of how this grant funding actually works. It sounds like it, the grant itself, this these dollars go to the Minnesota Council on Economic Education, and so. Do they um, provide free training to teachers? Do teachers have to apply for grants um, to this organization? And then um, how, are, how are the teachers chosen, uh, you know, if, if they do have to apply or is it just simply free? This, this provides the staff so that free training is allowed for all. I, I'm not exactly sure uh, 
what details to ask, but you get my drift here. Dr. Bunn, how do you do what you do? Yes, thank you so much for that question. So the primary way we do what we do is we provide the training to teachers. Um, all teachers, uh, we, we actually market what we do to th over 30,000 Minnesota teachers. Every teacher who will be required under the state standards to deliver economics or personal finance education, that's all elementary, all, all middle school, and all business, economics, social studies, and ag ed teachers at the high school level. They all receive information about our workshop offerings. During the school year, during the pandemic, we offered two weekly webinars on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, sometimes on Thursdays, that teachers could sign up for free of charge so it'd be easy and available to them. During weekends, summers, we offer more intensive, longer, three hour to five day, uh, 40 hour events and workshops for them. Historically, some years ago, there were some charges associated with them, but they pretty much given the, what teachers are facing um, and what the market is, pretty much we provide all of these free of, free of charge to Minnesota teachers and state funding is what will allow us to do that. So yes, the state funds go towards supporting our core staff of only four or five, plus a network of master teachers who are teachers in the classroom still, but are helpless with our instruction and a network of affiliated PhD faculty members around the state who participate in that instruction. And we also curate from all over the country the very best resources, and we also maintain our own set of curricular resources as well. So yes, that's the core way we deliver on this mission. Uh, Representative you. Bennett, follow up? Yeah, Mr. Chair, thank you. I do have another uh, unrelated or different question, but first I want to uh, thank you for that answer. And it sounds like a great program. I, I do believe that this kind of training is very important and happy to hear that it's provided free of charge to teachers. And it sounds like we need to get the word out there more so teachers know they can access this. So Mr. Chair, my second question is, and I'm not sure who wants to answer this, but do our current teacher prep uh, programs cover this subject? Um, they should be, if they're not, I would think. And um, uh, maybe I could hear from that because if they're not, they should be, and this should be in the plan. So does anybody have any answers for how our current teacher prep? Uh, I see a raised hand already. Thank you. Dr. Bunn? I'm going to answer initially, and perhaps Race wants to add to this. I think I saw him uh, indicating might too. Um, MC, one of the things we do is we service the pre-service programs around the state as well. So most faculty of the 27 pre-service college and university programs that train teachers in social studies and business areas do not, do not have faculty members, particularly in the social studies area, that know anything about economics and personal finance. So we make available to them our staff, um, our master teachers, and they contact us and let us know we'd like you to provide four hours of content for our methods class this semester or eight hours of content for our methods classes have focused on delivery of economics education at elementary or high school, whatever their classes that they're trying to do. So every year we are currently training um, three to 400 pre-service teachers. The number of pre-service teachers that might be, that graduate each year that may be asked to teach this material is about 1600 year in Minnesota. Um, so you're right, um, it should be taught at the college level in their training programs. Um, most of the programs do not have the staff knowledgeable in this area to do that. And we're working on a number of funds, including the one I just mentioned to you, to address that situation. Uh, Mr. Hardy, did you want to speak to this as well? Yes, please. Uh, thanks, Chair Dabney and committee members. Um, so in the social studies, um, when you're, um, I had the privilege of working at the University of Minnesota's um, post-baccalaureate program for three years, and then also at McAllister College's teacher education. And so in the social studies, you're, you're in there as a group, a cohort, and there are people who their major is history, um, political science, psychology, sociology, geography, anthropology, economics. So there's this wide range. And so in order for them to focus on just economics, there's just simply enough time. And as Dr. Bunn said, there's not the, nor is there the expertise or the staff 
you might luck out as the University of Minnesota, we happened to have at the time I was there, Dr. Hartunian, who had been a member of the council, who was on the board of the council and was an economist. So we happened to have in our program, you know, that expertise, but in general, that's not the case. And so that, that's why the council fills that void. And it's a void that's been there for decades. And the council has been doing its best with a just a skeleton crew to fill this void that's in 27, you know, institutions across the state. Thank you, Mr. Hardy and Ms. Siddiqui. So for example, um, I taught, I took an online econ class when I was in undergraduate school. That's it. That was my whole econ background. That's all I ever had. And then I was a social studies teacher. And the first class I taught was econ because nobody likes to teach it because it's kind of like the class that nobody really knows much about. Um, and so I would agree with um, Mr. Harden say like this really fills a big void. There are about 100 high school teachers across Minneapolis public schools. 25 of them are teaching econ this year. About 10 of them had never taught it before this year. And so I'm trying to like help support them and be like, these are different ideas you can do and trying to build resources so teachers can do it because most social studies teachers are like, I can teach US history, I can teach world and I can teach American government, human geography is okay, but econ, no, not doing it. <laughs> and so it kind of gets brushed aside to the newest faculty member oftentimes, or it also gets, um, unless you find somebody who's really interested and really like it. And so trying to build that passion is a really big void that MCE helps fill. Thank you, Ms. Siddiqui. Uh, Representative Bennett, any follow-up? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to comment, um, first of all, thank you to the council for filling in this gap. That's amazing and we appreciate that work, but I would also, also like to encourage our, if those are listening from our teacher prep programs that this is a gap that needs to be filled and using the council's expertise would be wonderful. You know, whether they pull you in as a, an expert, um, Know, teachers or whatever to come into their classrooms or you teach those college instructors but it sounds like it's a gap that really needs to be filled by our teacher prep programs as well so thank you thank you representative bennett representative you i just want to echo the fact that thank you for filling that void that's out there and understanding that teachers need a continuing education as well as just what they get in teacher prep program and this organization plays an important role. And frankly, I'm disappointed that it's only 150,000. We just heard an overview from an organization that got a million dollars and I still don't know what they do. So thank you so much for being evidence-based and very particular and being able to provide our teachers with so much expertise from your background and to help them uh, teach our students a very valuable skill. Thank you, Representative Joachim. Representative Sandel, any closing comments? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. It's a pleasure this morning to uh, hear the comments of um, um, Mr. Hardy, Mr. Uh, Coleman, and Ms. Siddiqui. Any of us uh, who have uh, taught school, and there are plenty of uh, faces on the on the screen this morning of, of teachers and the people who have been uh, uh, in schools, could recognize their experience and um, um, identify it. Uh, we're really uh, um, lucky to have an organization like MCE and, and Dr. Bunn, who I, I have to say personally has been terrific at, 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 in promoting this organization. Um, I hope we can uh, endorse this. I hope this uh, bill can uh, go from here to um, um, the finish line and um, that MCE can continue to offering its services across the state. Thanks very much, Jim and, uh, and, um, uh, and members for uh, uh, this opportunity to talk to you. Thank you, Representative Sandell. With that, Representative Yuakim renews her motion to lay over House File 3393 for possible inclusion or further consideration at a later date. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bunn, good to see you, testifiers. Thank you for taking your time today and sharing with us.